Ideal trauma-informed educational space is where the teacher is aware of their own trauma or their own experience in life. They, they, they practice self-care and they translate that into how they work with the students, recognizing that there are that all the students come with different baggage, different different perspectives, different uh, backgrounds, different identities. They come in with those differences. So for a teacher to honor those things, and not to say that things like discipline and things like um, teaching appropriate behavior in a social setting are not things, I mean, you should definitely do those things. But making sure that we understand the child's perspective when, when like a lot of times when, um, we hear about trauma-informed practice and whether it's good or not is when we see schools where kids are being expelled or kids are being overly disciplined and 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 there are a lot of phrase, uh, phrases that people use like oh if you expel a kid that's a road to prison or it's, a, it's like a, the road to uh, a place of disparity well that may or may not be true but what it is is, uh, is what they're t describing is a place that doesn't care and to me, if you want to overgeneralize it, but also make it very specific, a trauma-informed place is a place that cares, and also a place that identifies what kids need in their to, to, in order to learn well and to be able to meet that need in a very specific way. When every single one of the students who enters into your classroom could either have trauma in the background that they may or may not know, or trauma in the family that they may not may or may not know that affects them, or trauma in their generation or in, in the generations leading up to them being born that they may or may not know about, that, that affects them in either a cognitive or subconscious level. You don't know. So to, so to say it affects a very small, limited number of kids is overgeneralizing, saying, well, we only want to deal with this type of trauma. Only the ones who have been in big accidents or the ones who've been mistreated or the ones who've had mothers or fathers who've been drug addicted, etc., etc. Only the ones with very obvious trauma, we will deal with them. That is a small number. But when you look at uh, kids who've gone through trauma um, or have families who've gone through trauma that you may or may not know about, well, then you start looking at larger and larger and larger populations. You look at the staff and they might have gone through some traumas that they may be unaware about. Even um, in our conference today, um, I have a prosthetic arm, which I don't necessarily define as trauma in my lifetime, but it has a lot of similar pieces. And so even when we did a, a hand-holding, um, activity, it really triggered me and my personal sensitivities because I have anxiety about a new person who doesn't know me and know that I have a prosthetic arm having to hold my hand for the first time. Um, Trauma-informed practice benefits me in a situation like that. The person sitting next to me at the table um, has a family member, not sorry, not a family member, uh, a, a family friend who actually passed away yesterday in, in a car accident. So she was trying to engage in the content of the day, sitting on that. These are you know, not typically people you would associate as living with trauma, and yet we, would, we are both you know, coping the best that we can in the situation and trying to engage cognitively in a task when our physiological cells are reacting to something that you know, we've been experienced in the past. So I can't think of a student in a classroom anywhere who wouldn't benefit from, from the strategies that we use that we consider trauma-informed practice. Trauma-informed practice is just good teaching practice.